All right, all right. Shalom, shalom, everybody. Once again, it is your brew. That's me, Bon Shemayim, back with another one. I got my mic up today, so I wanted to see if it come in clear or everything. I didn't do too much editing. So without further ado, let's get into what this lesson plan is going to be about. This lesson plan is called Avoid Godless Questions, right? And Disputing on Behalf of the Gentiles. So um, there's a part of the Bible where it says avoid uh, <clears throat> foolish questions, right? About genealogies referring to the law. So we're going to go over that and kind of break down what that means. Without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> First scripture on today's menu is Titus 3. Okay, so Titus 3 says, But avoid foolish questions, right? A search or questioning in genealogies, right? The making of pedigree, a genealogy, in contentions, strife, in striving, a fight you know, physically fighting about the law, right? For they are unprofitable in vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admi admin, uh, admonition, right? Reject, right? So let's go into that heretic. A man uh, causing to vision is pretty much saying a man who is not a believer. Uh, I have to pull that up. I have to pull that up. We're going to pull that up, matter of fact. Let's go into the first one first. Avoid foolish questions, right? So let's let's get what is a foolish question. Let's get the definition of this. Matter of fact, let me make sure y'all can see it. Foolish is morals. Three, four, seven, four, right? Morals. Dull, stupid, foolish, right? Avoid dull, stupid, foolish questions. So we'd be like, so what's a foolish question to God, right? Or, or, or to a holy person? Because this is speaking of talking, uh, communication between holy people, speaking of holy things. It's not talking about like everyday communication at home. This is talking about communication between holy people, speaking on holy things, right? But it says, but avoid foolish questions because these are the men in the church, right? Foolish questions, right? So you would say, what is a foolish question? Because some people have been taught that you can't there is no stupid question or is no foolish question right but i you, uh let's get it right here foolish impious or imp impious impious i'm sorry oh i ruined that foolish impious godless there we go we got to the to the core to the meat and potatoes right godless that's what it means godless right <clears throat> so let's go back and throw godless in there but avoid godless questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law because people add and bring things into the law or new things come up with weren't dealt with in the law so there's a new way in which they have to deal with it and we're going to go into that next right and uh so let's get it so avoid foolish or godless or pious questions and genealogies right so this is like making a pedigree this saying well we would we're uh <coughs> in contentions right so for example people in the bible were saying that you couldn't eat meat at all and then other people were saying that you could eat meat and there's a scripture that says um you know <coughs> don't uh, don't pretty much don't judge the people based upon what they eat. It's not saying you can eat everything, but it's saying don't judge the people based upon what they can eat, right? <clears throat> so we're going to get into that. Matter of fact, I didn't have that scripture ready, so I'm going to have to pull it up. I'm sorry about this, y'all. I wouldn't own my game. My back is better than it was it's not better but it's definitely better than it has been y'all didn't know i had a little uh procedure and it kind of took me out for a little while it didn't kind of it did like it took me out for a little while <laughs> for sure but i'm back up able to make videos so praise the most high god for that and this one is actually a really good one 
So the scripture I'm going into next is Roman. Um, Romans 14. Romans 14. Okay. One through four, because that's what I was mentioning just a moment ago. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, right? So receive those who don't have as much faith or as you do or understanding. That means don't just cut them off and not deal with them, right? Receive ye, right? They don't have as much faith. But not to doubtful disputations, right? Not to uh, reasonings to bring forth judgment. Doubt, doubtful disputations. So what it's saying is receive you them, but don't receive them in to doubt what they're doing, right? To, to add doubt, uh, and I'm saying doubt, let, let me say, to uh, have a reasoning to bring forth judgment against them. Don't bring them in to have a reasoning to bring judgment against them, right? Don't say, hey, you could come in, but hey, we still don't think y'all right because you don't keep the Sabbath on the right days, right? We know that uh, what I mean is the the holy days. We know the Sabbath falls on the, on the Sabbath on the Saturday. And, and most people can reason that unless you're in a, a religion which kind of blind, blinded you. But what we're seeing is somebody might say, say uh, have they pass over two weeks earlier than somebody else somebody might have it a week later than somebody else right so don't bring them in and say hey, well you keep the passover you keep the feast days you do everything right and then get on them and be like look 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 hold on though buddy you might keep it right but those are the wrong days you're gonna get punished for that because these aren't things in these aren't even things in the law <laughs> These aren't even things in the law. So like you fighting over things that the law don't tell you yay or nay to. You creating your own law, which the Bible says do not add or take, uh, do not add there unto or take away there from, right? It says him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputation. So don't receive them just so you can try to uh, get on their head, right? For one believeth that he may eat all things right so it's saying all clean meats it's not saying unclean meats we're gonna get into that scripture after this another who is weak eateth herbs so he only eating vegetables and fruits so okay one person can say we should only eat vegetables and fruits and one person say well look the law says we could keep we could eat these animals because they're clean both are good we shouldn't be uh disputing or fighting or going against each other over these there's bigger things to dispute about to, to bring us together, to make the whole thing come together, we're going to get in that in the next scriptures, right? There's bigger things to dispute about than to dispute about things that aren't even lawful. Like you're not even going into the law. There's no even uh, order on which way is which. It's not, you know, you don't know if you're going up and down. It could be either or. And it's like, what well, it's got to be this, right? So it says, he who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despises him that eateth not, right? So if you eat meat, not saying unclean meat, but clean meat, and somebody else is saying, well, you shouldn't eat clean meat, don't despise them for it. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, right? And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. So if you don't eat the meat, if you just eat vegetables, you're just a vegetarian, and they eat meat, don't go against them for eating lawful meats, right? For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant, right? Because y'all both are servants under God. If you received him as in weak, you got to understand to receive means you accepted him. So once you receive him, then to not accept them. Now it's different if they start showing other characteristics, but these are people you received in. They might not have the same faith or belief, on certain things but the things that matter are the things of the law I'm not saying none of the other things matter but that's the order that's how we know what things to correct what things not to correct when to say something when not to say something right so let's get into um the next scripture which is acts 15 and we're going to start at five it says but there rose up 
a certain of the sect of Pharisees which believe. Let me let me uh, paint the scenario. So uh, let's go to the first just to paint the scenario. And a certain man which came down from Judea taught the brethren. So the brethren are the Jews, the Hebrews, the Brews, right? And said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Right, so it says a certain, so these are uh, the brothers, the brethren of the church, right? So this is what I say, that Acts breaks down two sects of Gentiles. This is what they would use to talk about two sects of Gentiles. But a Gentile is a Gentile, no matter what they try to say. Because on one tongue, they would listen to me, hear me closely. A Gentile is a Gentile, no matter what they try to say. On one, tongue, on one breath, they would say, Pastor Dowell is a Gentile because his father was a Gentile, right? But then on the second breath, they're saying these guys weren't Gentiles because they had part of Judea in them, because they were part of the brethren. No, they went out to all the areas and pulled people forth. All these people were actually Gentiles. We try to separate what Gentiles were. They were, they were regular Jews, but they were Gentiles because they didn't follow no jews is not a religion it's a it, it it is who you are by blood it's not a religion a gentile is a person that is not of that nation outside of the nation matter of fact let's get it gentiles a race a nation the people a, a people the nations or plural the nations as distinct from israel so a separate people so we could get that first right so let's get it and a certain man came down from judea taught the brethren right so he taught the brethren and these people were entering into the brotherhood right and said except ye be circumcised after the manner of moses so unless you got circumcised and you keeping all the commandments you cannot be saved when therefore Paul and Barnabas had saw no small dissension, right, in disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem. So they like, y'all should go up to Jerusalem and figure this out. Unto the apostles and the elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phenence and Samaria, declaring the conversation of the Gentiles, right? And they caused great joy unto all brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up a certain of the sect of Pharisees, right? Which believed, so they believed in our Savior, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to commend and to command them to keep the laws of Moses. So it's saying they need to, these people that's being brought in, they need to now be circumcised and keep all the laws of Moses. They need to keep the laws of Moses, all the laws, right? And the apostle and elders came together for to consider this matter. So now all the apostles and the elders, all these men came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, right? disputation so this means that they were debating this matter they were bringing opposite points or opposite arguments into the matter to try to figure out that's the only way let me tell you otherwise people would have still been a war right now in 2023 it had been four thousand year war is still going on because people were able to sit at a table bring what they felt like their side their opinion and the other person was bring and then they they found that middle ground that's how things get accomplished and solved so this is what the elders is doing right it says <clears throat> and when there had been much disputing so it's been much disputing over this matter peter rose up and said unto them right so after everybody going everybody going now peter rising up to say something to everybody peter rose up and said unto them man 
and brethren. Ye know how that a good while ago God made a choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Because remember, Peter received the vision, and then he woke up and dealt with the three Gentiles and went to go deal with Cornelius, right? And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, right? So it's like God is dealing with these people, giving them the Holy Ghost, right? So this answers that question. These people were receiving the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith, right? So he hadn't separated us in this truth. And what we're doing now, we weren't, they weren't separated, right? Now, therefore, why tempt ye God? So he said, if God gave them the spirit, if God brought them to us to learn from us, if brought God thought that great of them to make them partakers in what he allowed us to know through the Savior, through Yeshua, Wamasiach, right? Why tempt God? Why then say, no, 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 they need to do this when God allowed them to be brought in without that, right? It says, now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our father nor we were able to bear, right? So why would we put this on their neck and we haven't been able to bear it ourselves? It's for us to do it. This was a covenant he made between us. They were brought in so that all nations could receive mercy and salvation, but they weren't brought into the same covenant, right? It says, but we believe that through grace, through the grace of our Lord, Yeshua wa Masiach, we shall be saved, right? Even as they, right? So we believe that no matter what we did, the things that would cause us to no longer make it to the kingdom, that because our savior came we can now be saved right we can make it to that kingdom <clears throat> then all of the multitudes kept silent and gave an audience to barnabas and paul right because remember now they gave an audience to barnabas and paul remember paul was the head of the gentiles there was a separation eventually paul charged peter over how peter treated the gentiles different and there was a separation right so Paul and Barnabas, Paul was blinded by Christ and then sent out to go minister to the Gentiles. Okay. So now they're giving an audience to Barnabas and Paul. And this is what I was saying. This is how we discuss matters. This is how we came up with matters. And this is how service was. So it wasn't like in Christian church where there's one pastor. Otherwise, our Savior, Yeshua Wamasiach, Christ, he would have never been able to get up there and speak at all. He was a carpenter. He wasn't a Pharisee or a Sadducee. He wasn't part of a religious sect. He was a carpenter, right? They wouldn't allow him to talk. But all the men gave audience to whomever a man, whatever man was filled with the word who had inspired words by God, right? So they gave an audience to Barnabas and Paul, to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracle and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. So they're like, listen, God allowed us to do all of these miracles to the Gentiles. So obviously God loves them, right? God cares about them because he let us do all these miracles to the Gentiles. And after they had held their peace, and after they had held their peace, James answered saying, man and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how God at first did visit the Gentiles. So he's talking about Peter saying this, right? To take out of them a people for his name, right? So he took to take a portion out of them for himself because he's God. Who's to say he don't deserve a portion of all peoples? He's God. He's the creator of all. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. So it's like even the, even the Bible agrees with this. Even the prophets agree with this. So what they're saying is, isn't unbiblical this is what he's saying that's why i say this is a this is a debate these guys are having right he's like what they're saying <clears throat> let's get back to it and to this agree the words of the prophets right as it is written so it's saying it's this is written as well right after this i will return 
and I will build again the tabernacle of David. So they were the tabernacle of David, which was the first specific one built by Christ. You don't remember, he told them, take no scroll, take no cloak, and go not into the land of the Gentiles. I mean, but go, go not except unto the lost sheep of Israel, right? So at first they went and started gathering only God's people, right? So that's what he's saying right here. And we will build again the tabernacle of David which is fallen down and i will build again the ruins thereof and i will set it up right so he's going to set up the kingdom the kingdom needs a king first which that's what yeshia wamasiach or our savior christ was he was the king that the residue of men might seek after the lord in all the gentiles right so that the residue of men might seek after the lord so the residue the remaining so the people who will remain see that's why i say two thousand years ago they thought that christ was coming back like tomorrow we live in the time of christ is coming and people don't want to admit that he's coming in their in their time they're like look he coming maybe 30 years maybe four years not now right it says that the residue of man might <clears throat> seek after the lord and all the gentiles right so that the remaining man is talking these are the men of israel right humankind the residue of man but it, the reason it says end all the gentiles in conjunction because it's showing that that residue of man is speaking of israel the hundred and forty four thousand along with all the people who make it that ten percent that make it out of the third percent or out of the uh, third percent right the three point three percent right <laughs> of the population that residue of man might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles. So the Gentiles would be seeking after the Lord as well with them, right? Upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord. Who doeth all these things, right? <clears throat> it says, Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world, right? Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them, right? So it says, known unto God are all of his works from the beginning of the world. So God knew everything that's been happening with everybody from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is, so he's saying my judgment, my decision, meaning they all have different opinions. My decision is that we trouble not them which from among the gentiles are turned to god right which from among the gentiles are turned to god so he's like if they turn to god listen let's not trouble them but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollute the from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood right for Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So he's like, so if they want to know all the laws of Moses, they could go to a synagogue near them. They get, the laws get preached every day, right? Every day in the, in the every Sabbath day they get preached in the synagogue. So he's saying these are the things we want them to do. So let's go down and break that down. We're going into um, Acts 15 and 25, right? And it says, it seemed good unto us. Wait, wait. For inasmuch as we heard that a certain went out from us, have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law. So it's, he's telling them now, these are the judgments. Now, so now that they come up with a decision, they've been sent out to bring the judgment to the brothers, to the, to the other brothers, to the Gentiles, right? Of what the Bruce came up with, with their debate. And it says, <clears throat> for inasmuch as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, ye must be circumcised and keep the law right so he's saying that we know that people came and told you you got to get circumcised like the law of moses and keep all the laws like we have to to whom we gave no such commandment so these people hadn't discussed it with the brotherhood there was no major decisions made and no decision was made by one person this was a group of people 
with different beliefs all sitting there different types of the same belief in christ and in the law but all different type of ways of believing in those things who had to come together and figure out how would they do everything as a whole which is what i'm praying we could get back to as a people right to whom we gave no such commandment it seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord right so it means they all assembled on one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, right? Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of the Lord, Yeshua wa Masiach. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost and to us, to lay upon you no greater burden than these so these was the laws this was the rules given to to the gentiles these were right here these are the rules given into the gentiles so it seemed good to the holy ghost and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that ye abstain from meats offered to idols right so abstain from sacrifices days you don't know if they're good or bad abstain from them Ex uh, abstain from them it abstain from bad meats that were once offered to idols for these celebrated days abstain from them because that's how they celebrated back then they had certain days in which they cooked certain things as a feast right so it's saying abstain from meats offered to idols so you know these meats are offered to gods and god is against them don't eat these meats and from blood right so stay away from blood don't touch blood we could go back to the law for that one and for the meats offered to idols right meaning the celebrations that the gentiles partook in and the meats that they ate to celebrate and sacrifice we were supposed to abstain from they were also were supposed to abstain from it and from blood because blood carries disease and sickness which we were supposed to abstain from and from things strangled meaning the way uh something was killed it couldn't be strangled to death right and from fornication right which means to lay with a lot of people like we would say in this generation have a lot of bodies now remember solomon them had a lot of wives but those were their wives they married them they were with them forever see we live in a generation of fornication where we make a wife and then do away with the wife even though christ said uh what god put together let no man separate right and from fornication from which if ye keep yourselves ye shall do well fare ye well right <clears throat> So, uh, is that it? I actually went down further than I was going to go to. I was actually going to stop right here. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord. But I went down further than what I was going to go to. But that's it for this lesson plan. Like I said, the day's lesson plan is called <coughs> Avoid Godless, Godless Questions. So we went over in that first part in Titus where it says, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions striving about the law. So I went into the second part of Acts just to go a synopsis of all of this. I went to the second to Acts 15 to show how nothing was done without a logical debate and sitting there to bring in four facts and information to the table to figure out what the truth was. That's how God put it in the hearts of the men to do it. Right. And we went to this because this says but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law for they are unprofitable in vain right so it's saying that like avoid foolish questions and then we were like well what's a foolish question right because they'll say nothing is no there's no stupid question and foolish means let's go to it one more time foolish means dull stupid or foolish and people will say well there's no such thing as a stupid question but the bible says avoid stupid questions 
or foolish question. So what would foolish be? Foolish. Impious, impious, or impious, or godless, right? So godless. Avoid questions that aren't talking about the law or the Bible or the order. Now, I know, like, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about if you're dealing with the community, the church, <laughs> the brews and stuff like that. If this is just like a brew that's your bro or your friend, y'all could talk about whatever y'all talk about. If it's your wife or whatever, y'all could talk about whatever y'all talk about. Just make sure you keep God on the, on the front of the, of the brain, right? <laughs> so that's what we first went into, right? And then we went into Romans. Because it said about the eating herbs to show that they were they were disputing about this, but this is unlawful. I mean, un it has nothing to do with the law, so it's godless. It has nothing to do with God. So this is that exact example from Titus where it says, "But avoid foolish questions, uh, or stupid questions, or godless questions." Right? It says, "Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye." with no doubtful disputation. So when you receive your brother, don't receive him just so that you can now bring judgment upon him. For one believeth that he can eat all things and another who is weak eateth herbs, right? So one person might understand the law, it might be strong. Remember it says uh, for for uh, a skilled person, a skilled uh, man eateth meat and don't drink milk, right? So it's saying like if one person is not as strong in the faith, they might say, well, look, I'm just on only eat vegetables. I can't do the meat because I feel like God is telling me not to do the meat, right? But one that one that's stronger in the faith, he eateth all things, right? And one that's weaker in the faith, he only going to eat the herbs. But don't despise each other. So that was the breakdown of the foolish questionings or the stupid questionings or the godless questions, right? In Titus. And then we went to Acts, and we went to Acts to show the brothers disputing, because they had this how they came together, disputing to figure out how they would deal with the Gentiles who were brought into the fold. On that note, <laughs> I just want to thank y'all for tuning in. I want to say Kaolao Haya by Shimia Shaya Rabawat Kodaj, which is all praises to the Most High in the name of His Son. If you like the video, hit the like button. Even if you don't like the video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed and share this bad boy. Drop a comment. Let's talk about it. Let me know what y'all think about these scriptures. And if you know anybody who needed to hear this, let me know. On that note, I just want to say Shalom, which is peaceful greetings, and Barakatha, which is bless you. Peace. Until the next one.